Well, thank you for taking the time mm -hmm. to chat. It's part of our neighborhood campaign. We're really just talking to artists who live uh, in the neighborhoods where we have space about their creative practices. Who I am, so my name is Lionel, Lionel Cruet. I am from Puerto Rico. I'm an artist and I work with audiovisual material, um, usually, you know, extended into different practices that revise like the creation and the making of work within the digital realm. And most of the thematics of the works that I create and that I produce is within yeah, this thematic framework of like revising our relationship with nature through metaphorical references and understanding, you know, technology and geopolitics and how those play an important part in our society nowadays. All of that also comes from a lot of like theoretical references and frameworks that I have from different Caribbean significant uh, uh, thinkers and people that are poets, writers, and as well other artists to merge into like the kind of work that I'm that I'm making. I'm very interested in participatory practices through the arts. I think that we're living in a day and age where um, we have audiences that are less passive and more active. And I think just because observing that from a point of view of an artist, where you know we have to be considerate of our audience and like our audience more as an active. You you know, like member that participates and get immersed into the work. So those are things that I'm that I'm constantly thinking and that I'm revising through my work. So I spend half of my time between New York City and um, Puerto Rico. I'm usually around the Bronx and in Washington Heights and Upper Manhattan. Those are areas that I just happen to be because of my relationship with people. That's why I have strong relationships with the Bronx, specifically in the South Bronx, and working with different organizations and individuals. So I'm interested in like geopolitics specifically and how, you know, how our perceptions of like land and of territories, you know, are so much determined, not just and only and solely by what we see, but also like what we learn, what has been, you know, sort of like politically in place to for us to be able to, you know, identify what it is and what is not. How those spaces are paired with even, you know, our own realities and seeing our own realities like through them. For example, like one of the things that I present to people is, you know, the Caribbean as a region is a place where this archipelago of islands are like closer together, but they're, you know, separated and they're very apart. You know, and how like history and politics like play an important part of like how we even understand each other and how we relate to each other. Political ideologies that are like taken from different places and are sort of like implemented. Religious beliefs and all of that changes how we observe sort of like territories and landscapes and our own geography. So those are things that I'm interested to bring, you know, through my work and through that research. How has Puerto Rico impacted your work or inspired your practice? How does it kind of relate? I don't know how to relate. I think if a fish is in the water, like you can talk to a fish about water because it's just not going to understand that in context with anything else. Mm. I'm not attempting to do like work that is connected. I'm just absorbing experiences of like, mm. you know, living, talking to people, seeing, reading, and also like being in context with, you know, in context and in connection and in dialogue with the rest of the world too, because I feel that one of the advantages that have, we have now like in the 21st century and you know the day and age of like you know massive international and global communication is that we can be able to be in contact with other people and share like you know what we have and you know find those similarities differences and you know share in di with different nuances that as part of like the moment that we're living I'm aware of that and I want to be able to engage in those scenarios so in terms of like you know how Puerican it is or how not like I just think it is of people to be able to like it and it is for audiences to be able to like you know find themselves in the work or maybe not and I think that could spark some new discussions and that is something that I like specifically about the arts and about the umbrella of like arts and culture um, and the production of like the visual arts that it's always very you know there's there's open-endedness for interpretation for ways of absorbing things and for ways to identify yourself with the work that you're seeing there are things that are inevitable that you know, people will be able to like make those connections, but there's others that are open doors to people to wonder and to have a imaginative thinking. I'm thinking and trying to establish a new relationship with New York City. I don't know if I consider myself part of like New York City. I feel that like being a New Yorker, you know, not only someone that is born, but it's like someone that has a certain way of like carrying themselves in the world. And those are things that I have absorbed in the past few years from New Yorkers and people that are from here. You know, there's a certain pride of like being from 
city. I share some of the things, but it's no, there's a way of how people carry around themselves, you know, how they advocate for certain things, you know, and that's something that you see across the board. You know, there's an identification of some sort of like being that, you know, resilient, and I feel that like that's something that I have like learned in here, you know, to not be not shy away about things. That is kind of like one of the things that I can rescue from. You know, my, my social experience is being in New York City. So I think New York City is a sexy city, as I would call it, because at times you can, you know, fulfill your needs, like, you know, quite fast, and your expectations, but those come to strings, strings attached. That's why I'm saying I'm, I'm still seeing my relationship with, like, New York City as a city. A community, more than just being a group of people, is an action, right? It's, it's an action of, like, you know, things that are moving, things that are organic, and things that are, you know, producing, and just like taking parts of yeah. that affects the organism. Mm -hmm. So just, just understanding those are, are, you know, are vital things. Mm -hmm. What has been your experience here, having space, not having space, finding space, kind of like the journey through having a place to make? Work. In New York City, there's a structure of heavy sort of like commercial system. The spaces that you see that like thrive is because they are, you know, they yeah. found themselves, you know, as non-profit organizations, as, in, you know, as, as, as private organizations, yeah. you know, as, as like museum institutions, you know, some sort of like a, a conglomerate of like things that are, that are seen not as an individual, but as a group. Right? In a city that has the pursuits of sort of individualism, so sometimes there's like this like, you know, mismatching of like systems that are in place within the city. One has to think about like how you are a creator and a maker in this a specific environment. So being an artist as an individual and trying to like find space will be something that is like extremely complicated, especially if you don't fall within certain brackets, like an economic brackets. So it, 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 it could seem at times like a very impossible sort of like mission. How has having this studio impacted your practice? I have benefited a lot in the past like six months as I'm seeing, you know, myself being here and I'm in the process of like internalizing in the purpose of me being here and what I have achieved. And one of the things that um, I, for me, that was a goal that I put at the moment of like stepping into the door was like, I want a space where I can you know, display some of the things that I'm doing and some of the things that are done and being able to have it in a safe space. That was my first goal. My second goal was that I need, that I wanted and I was envisioning in a space where I can sit down and have dialogues with people mm -hmm. like what we're doing right now mm -hmm. and invite and have like studio visits with people. That scenario will have been very different if I invite them to my place, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, where my bed is and every like, it's just a little bit of mm -hmm. like merging into the personal thing. Mm -hmm. And I feel that um, it's just like crossing lines of like intimacy and other things. Being here is is, um, is an opportunity to like, you know, redesign and rethink and, you know, prototype and have a space where I can say to a person, yeah, this is how it looks like, other than seeing it on a computer, other than seeing it in a printed book. You know, in the arts, I think there's this open license to be able to like reconsider what your practices are and sort mm -hmm. of like do this like soul searching and then like end up into the product that you're making. So what is something that you want to see in your neighborhood? For the Bronx in particular, I feel that there could be much opportunities for artists to be able to create and to have like more appearances and happenings, maybe from a public artwork or like, you know, just things that are more, much more visible. Um, I think that is very necessary and some of those that happen like independently and some of those that happen through organizations. I feel that um, the Bronx already has really strong visionary people and, and, and people that are, you know, like doing really amazing things. Just highlighting that and making it visible was something that I'm always like looking for. So yeah, I'm working right now, I'm a fellow for Create Change with the Laundromat Project and one of the discussions, you know, that we are having was focusing on this theme of abundance. We were, were working specifically with the community of the South Bronx and Hunts Point. Being able to like tap a little more from like what people think about the Bronx, right? Because the Bronx was burning into a certain point or was this or was that or what is now? And how can we envision a place where like artistic you know, happenings can continue, right, and can be fostered. What are you currently working on? What are you getting ready for? So I'm working with the Laundromat Project, the Create Change through Fellowship, and we are going to 
we're in the process of like making a project right now. It's a group cohort with six other uh, participants. So we're gonna make this project as a collaboration, but also like in connection and in response to the community. So I'm gonna go to South America, to Ecuador. I'm working on an exhibition this amazing curator, Ana Rosa Valdez, she's curating this exhibition called Geografías de los Singulares, so Geographies of the Singular or Singularities. I'm going to be presenting a piece, have this collection, this archive of like images. You can search me online, leonardthread.com. Also, social media. Email is a really good form of communication and getting to know what's happening. Yeah. Thank so you. thank you, thank you. Thank you.